Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be working with the 125 grain Spear TNT in 308. Now, I haven't done anything in 308 for quite a while. In fact, I was looking back at my load book, and the last time I did any sort of workup in 308 was in April of 2020. So this is now January of 2021, and we're going to mess around with it a little bit. If you'll remember, uh, this bullet did not do very well for me at all in 300 Blackout. And I've got 200 of them, so I figured we might as well figure out some sort of load in 308 that we could do. And our goal for today is super high velocity. So, I went to the Spear load data, which I'll probably put up on the screen here so it's easier for you to see. And their fastest powder listed was AR Comp. Uh, this is a powder I shoot quite a bit in 6.5 Grendel, so I've got uh, probably about four pounds of it left. And uh, we're not gonna be using very much of it at all today, though our charge per case is gonna be pretty high. We're gonna be at 49 grains of powder in a 308, which is quite a bit higher than I've ever done before. Because we are filming this in 2021, and all of the components are just a little bit scarce right now, we're going to be doing kind of an abbreviated workup. This isn't anything that I'm looking for ultra high precision. I'm just looking for a lightning fast round, um, kind of as a, a varmint load to have in the load book on standby for any time we wanna load up and do some, uh, I don't know, probably use this as a planking round, maybe as a varmint round at some point, might use it as a, a uh, pest control coyote sort of round. We'll see. Anyway, uh, other components for today. Uh, the brass is Starline. Once fired, large rifle primer brass. I have uh, wet tumbled this and it's looking real clean. It's been sized. Uh, the only thing I haven't done to it yet is chamfer and deburr the case mouth. So we'll do that in just a minute here, especially since this is a flat base bullet. Uh, primers are Federal uh, Large Rifle Match Primers, uh, 210M, and I already mentioned we're using AR Comp. We're going to start at a charge weight of 48 grains on the lowest one and go in half grain increments since we're up around that 50 grain range, and uh, we're going to see if we can get anything usable out of uh, this load. So let me clear some of the stuff out of the way and we'll get set up to load. Okay, so since I haven't done it yet, the first thing I need to do is go through and give these case mouths a quick twist with the chamfer and deburring tool. I probably don't need to do the outside uh, at all. Just give the inside just a tad bit of a chamfer to make the bullet slide in there a little easier. But I'm used to doing the outside and inside, so we'll go ahead and do both. Not taking off much material at all. Just shining it up a little bit and uh, making that bullet slide in there nice and slick. All right, we got through those, so uh, let's prime them up. <clears throat> I will use the Hornady tool this time. I uh, still haven't really found anything or haven't purchased anything that I like better. <clears throat> Well, I'll dump 15 of them out here. And we'll prime them up. Slides in there nice and easy. Uh, those primer pockets are real slick right now because of the wet tumbling, but they still feel nice and tight. No trouble at all. Uh, they're definitely not too loose, which I wouldn't expect since I've only fired them once. Okay, I do have one primer that kind of flipped itself over there, so I'm gonna have to watch for that. Several of you have asked why I don't prime on press, and the reality is priming on this press is, is doable, 
but you have to handle each primer individually and touch it, and I don't know how much that makes a difference in it, but I try to not touch my primers any more than I absolutely have to. Okay, there's our one that's flipped over, so I'll go in and rotate it. And I never felt like, especially on the stroke this way, I don't feel like I have uh, quite the feel, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna, you know, not seat them deep enough or crush them in there when priming on the press. I know a lot of people do it successfully, so that's probably not an issue, but I'd just rather have something that uh, feeds me the primers and I can do it a little quicker. Even though I do have trouble with this tool once in a while, it's really not that bad. All right, we're all primed up and ready to go. We're on to powder, and I'm gonna have to wait a minute here to let my scale warm up. And the last thing I was loading was 450 Bushmaster with uh, Winchester 296. So I'm gonna make sure all of that is out of here. This is definitely gonna be a shorter loading session since we're only loading 15 rounds. Don't know if I even have the right scoop yet or not. No, I'm down at 35 grains. I'll grab a bigger one. I'm guessing even this 3.1 is not gonna be big enough. No, we got 41. Yeah, probably, the, I think this will be the biggest powder charge I have uh, ever used in anything. That 450 came close. Okay, 47 grains with the 3.4. Let's try the 3.7. We've only got two bigger scoop sizes than this, and these are these are unused. I just broke them off from the package. I'm gonna slide the scale over a little bit. It was on kind of a bubble in the mat. All right, this pan is usually 126.4 grains, and it's reading 126.2. So I'm gonna have to calibrate this scale real quick. We'll calibrate it with the pan in place. Okay. All right, we'll switch back to grains. And we're still getting 126.2. That's all right, I guess we'll roll with it. All right, I get, still need to test this 3.7 cc scoop. I guess I really don't know why I include this part in most videos, picking out the right scoop. We got 51.7 on that. All right, I guess we'll use this scoop, just kind of play it by ear. Oops, couldn't get that scoop quite turned around in that bowl. It's kind of a big scoop. All right, let's weigh out the first charge of 48 grains. All right, there's 47.4 or 6, whatever. We'll trickle up from there. Close. It's just not wanting to take over that. There's 48 grains. All right, my scale might not be warm enough yet, but I'm gonna dump this charge in a case and make sure it's zeroing back out. It is. All right, still reading a little light. We'll trickle it back up. I think I lost a few kernels there when I poured it back in anyway. Hmm. 
It's not wanting to get exactly that uh, 48 grains for some reason. Like I say, I might need to let the scale warm up for a few more minutes. Well, hey, there we're getting our 126.4. Several people have all also told me, uh, ditch the electronic scale and go with a balance beam. Well, I have a balance beam. I just never use it because I don't think uh, with the how it actually lines up on there, I can get as precise. Okay, now, something interesting here, and you might have seen it already. Look where the powder comes in that case. Uh, that's all the way up there. We may have to trickle that in. Okay, that's 48 grains, and this is our lowest charge, and we're all the way up the neck. Okay, let me uh, trickle this in super slow. It did say the 49 grains would be compressed. All right, that definitely got us a little more room in there, but not a whole lot. That's making me think uh, that, now they were using federal brass on their test. They're making me think that I am throwing caution too far to the wind. That, that's a pretty full case of powder. We're right up in there on the neck with the powder. And we could definitely see the bullet on that, but uh, yeah, yikes, that's full. So. I'm gonna back off uh, two more steps. We'll go ahead and do our we'll go ahead and do our normal five shot group test uh, as much as I didn't want to, and uh, we'll get 25 shots in this test. All right, let's back off another two steps. I'll just get uh, 10 more pieces of brass prepped and ready. I won't make you guys sit around and watch that part, and uh, then I will load up starting at, I guess, 47 grains. We'll go down another grain in our charge weight and uh, see where we're at on case fill. All right, hopefully I've got the camera where you can see all of this. But let's go to 47 grains and we'll start clear down there. All right, that's 47 grains. And I'm just going to kind of slowly dump that powder in there. All right, we're down a little bit more. We're more we're more right in there. Um, this bullet isn't very long. In fact, let's take a look at the bullet here. Yeah, these bullets are real short, and I doubt we're going to be seeing them very far down into the case at all. So uh, we might not be compressed with this first load, but it's going to be close. We're, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens when we start seeding bullets. And I think I got a tad bit of powder bumped out of the case there, so we'll reweigh. Yep, sure did, by about two tenths. All right, so I think all of the interesting part here of weighing the charge is done. I'll come back to you guys at bullet seating. All right, so I'm going to be very careful with this. Uh, bullet seating may be interesting. As you can probably see, uh, we have some very full cases. The 49 grain load comes most of the way up the neck. We've probably got um, uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch to the top on those 49 grain loads, and I poured these powder charges in very slowly. So let's get over to the bullet seating guy and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, this uh, could be interesting. Okay, I suppose how I'm going to do this, since we're not going to be seeding them very deep into these cases, 
is, uh, I'll get it down part way there and I'll raise it up in. Okay, not seating anything yet. Ah, I forgot. We have to make sure we're not crimping here. So, whoops, and I managed to spill some powder out of that case. So, give me a second and I'll fix that mistake. Yep, I'd lost about a half grain there. So, uh, I'm going to set this up. <laughs> See, I would have done it there again. I'm going to set this up with an empty case. Okay, there we're touching. I'm going to back out a full turn. And tighten the lock ring. I do not have a micrometer seating stem for this die. So uh, we're going to have to go by this bit here. So I'll back that out and we'll see the bullet. I am going strictly by Spears data here. Okay, we're already getting a little bit of seating there. So I'm going to just pop it into the case just to hold my bullet in place. And then I'll pop this seating stem out. Okay. Give it just a little bit of seat and we'll see where we're at. So, that looks pretty good, but I know it's not seated in there very far. We are, uh, yeah, we're just barely seated into the case. So, let me get my caliper. Make sure the jaws are cleaned off. We're at zero. What we're going for is 2.695 on the overall length. Yeah, I've got about 150 thousandths to come down. I'll hope that's not too much. Uh, 100 thousandths more. Two point seven five nine. I'll go a half turn here. Try to creep up on it, and I will take a bullet based O jive measurement in a second. Once we get this dialed in, I didn't go very far. Two point six. No, two point six three five is what we're going for. We're at two point seven three two, so we're still a hundred thousands long. And we are that far into the case. I wonder if, yeah, we're already down on the powder. Uh, and this is our lowest charge. So, huh, I'm wondering if I should check, and I know this is gonna chamber in my rifle. It's an awfully short load. I'm wondering if I should leave it out here at 2.735. Well, we'll go ahead and do what the data says, I guess. And just keep on seating it in there. All right, we're at 2.7 pretty much. And I don't know if I want to go 70 thousandths more. We've got plenty of bullet into the case there. Um, yeah, I don't know that I want to go much farther, especially since we have such compressed loads. Or they will be once we get up here. Yeah, definitely no powder moving around in there. Let me double check that data. Yeah, 2.635 inches. Tell you what, I'm gonna seat one more at this depth and go grab my rifle to make sure they chamber. And we're, we might just leave it at this uh, 2.7. So I've been thinking through this. And if we want to get 
the velocity that Spear quotes, which I don't know if I've mentioned, Spear has quoted 3,231 feet per second for our top charge here. Um, if we want to get there, we're going to have to compress them as much as they say. So let's go ahead and dial it in. Um, we'll see if uh, we run into trouble, but we won't know unless we try. Good grief, that looks short. I'm not getting any crunchiness on the press arm, so must have plenty of airspace in there to go. Okay, we got 20 thousandths to move. And I'm just gonna creep up on it. 10 thousandths more. We've got almost all of the bearing surface in there. We might, okay, 2.639. Uh, let's just stop there. 2.639. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to get a bullet based to ogive measure or a cartridge based to ogive measurement because I think the ogive, well, it might just be barely above the mouth of the case here. I don't know why they're having a seat that deep. That's all the way into the case or the, all the way down the neck. Oh, well, we're going to go with it. Um, we're still five thousands longer than they say, but or four thousands, but we're gonna go with it. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a bullet based to o or a cartridge based to ogive measurement. Oh, we are our ogive is still out of the case by just a little bit there, uh, not a whole lot, but we can still get a measurement on that. We're at Pretty much 2.048. And I guess I'm just going to go ahead and seat these bullets. We'll see uh, if we have to adjust the die down to get the bullet to seat deep enough. These flat base bullets start a little harder than some of the others. But that's alright. We are just leaving a little scuff around the bullet, but it's certainly not digging in there. All right, next charge. You know what, I'm just gonna go up and seat one of each charge here for video purposes so that we can get this loading part of the video finished up. 2.051, we grew by two thousands. Tell you what, let me seat one more and make sure it's not a fluke in the bullet at 2.0495. It was kind of a fluke in the bullet, I'm thinking. So, all right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, this is 48 grains. Definitely no powder moving, but I'm not hearing any crunch. Not feeling anything weird at the bottom of the stroke. 2.050, we're pretty close on that one. 28.5 grains. We must have, tell you what, I'm gonna measure neck tension because it seems like we've got quite a bit on this. And I thought when I was sizing them that it felt like they were being oversized. 2.051 on that. We'll see one more of those. I'm getting a couple little bullet shavings down on my shell holder here. Just those flat base bullets taking off a tiny bit of copper jacket there. Uh, 2.050, so we haven't really changed much. Okay, let's see our highest charge of 29 grains. And we're squishing that powder down half the neck pretty much. Maybe time, and, and I know it is time, I need to 2.048, so we're really about the same. It's probably time to upgrade to some bushing sizing dies. And we may go ahead and do the whole uh, expander mandrel thing while we're at it, but we probably won't do that in 308. Probably do it in 6.5 Creed. All right, 2.051, so if we had a change, it wasn't much, maybe a thousandth, two thousandth, somewhere in there. So that's not gonna be an issue. These charges will all be compressed, and I guess I'm going to be okay with that. 
we'll get out to the range here and uh, do some testing with these, being very careful, of course. Um, but hopefully we don't run into any trouble and hit our velocity target of around 3,200 feet per second, which is going to be kind of crazy for a 308, but we'll see if we get there. Oh, I was going to measure neck tension. Uh, here, let me do that on this charge here. We've got 0 0.331 at the mouth. That was 0 0.331, and now we're at 0 0.335. So we've got about 4 thousandths of neck tension. Yeah, uh, that's more than I like. I like about 2 thousandths. So yeah, probably try time to get a different sizing die for 308 as well, because it's probably overworking this brass. Anyway, I'm gonna get the rest of these seated. Uh, it probably will be a few weeks before I shoot this, um, maybe maybe a week or two, we'll, we'll see. But I won't be able to get to the range for a little bit here. Um, but for you guys, it's going to be right now. We are out at the range, and I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the audio quality. Uh, I am missing a memory card, so not able to record on my normal microphone. Uh, and the memory card that I have in the target camera is very low on space, so we're going to shoot kind of quickly, which is okay uh, because we are shooting for velocity over accuracy today. We're just seeing what kind of speeds we can crank out, and uh, we'll see if they shoot halfway decent. I'm not going to shoot sloppily or rapid fire or anything. All right, five loads in the gun. Interested to see how this recoils. Uh, because I don't know quite where this load's going to hit, I'm going to shoot for the top center target. And let's go. Ooh, that's a sharp little kick. <laughs> and we're already over 3,100 feet per second. 3,122. Uh -huh. Oh, and we got... Uh, this might be short, guys. We got a nice flat primer on that. And we are high. I'm going to bring my point of aim down to the center of that target. And I will uh, adjust down for the next group. That's a different sound it has to it than when I was sighting in. That's for sure. I'm pulling my face off this stock. But with this gun and its... Uh, Rough bolt cycling, it's almost impossible not to do. I try not to pull my face off this time. Yeah, not too bad of a group there. Let's go uh, change the string on the chronograph and we'll shoot another group. I don't see any smearing, no primer cratering whatsoever. The primers are just a little bit flat. So we'll shoot one more group anyway. <laughs> These cartridges look comical with that short little bullet stuck in there. And it's actually seeded pretty deep. If I cared, we could play with seeding depth on this load, but I really don't. All right, oh, I did say I was gonna come down a minute. I'm still using this old crappy uh, Bushnell 4 to 12 by 40 uh, something scope. Not great, but it gets the job done. It is on the list to be replaced. Bolt lift feels fine. <laughs> well, three of those are super tight so far. One more. Yeah, that's not too shabby of a group either there. Maybe an inch overall, with four of them going into 0.7 or so. Well, that one wasn't terrible. We'll move on. Looks like the velocity was about the same on that one. We are shooting pretty quickly here, so the barrel is, well, it's not very warm yet. Uh, it's like 40 degrees out here, and the barrel's probably 85. 
Now I'm going to watch the velocity a little bit because I know AR comp has a tendency to spike once in a while. And we're back over 31. Brass is fine. Okay. I pulled that shot. Like we're going through a point of impact shift there. Right at 3100. That barrel's getting toasty now. Uh, I don't know if I can afford to let it wait a second, but uh, I'm going to. I'm gonna go check the target camera, see if it's got any room left on it, and uh, I'll be back. Well, it's cold enough and breezy enough that that short walk cooled down the barrel significantly. We still got about five minutes left of recording left on the target camera. I did swap the battery just so that it wouldn't die on our last little bit here. All right, we were at 3,100 feet per second still on that last load. So we've got a, a pretty solid node here, I'd say. But let's see if we get any faster. Exactly the same as all the rest have. Exactly the same. Now nope, there we're starting to get a shiny spot on the graph. Just barely. And we jumped up like 50 feet per second on that shot. So that group is big. <laughs> this is probably really stupid. Don't try this at home. But I'm going to go ahead and try that next load. We're not over max here. If I remember right, we went right after what Hornady said was max. So we should be okay. Oh, let me change the string. All right. Last group. Let's see if we can uh, bust that 3,200 feet per second mark with uh, at least one of these shots here. And brass looks just the same as the last shot. Not too bad. Primer's flat, but not, you know, I can still see the edges of the pocket. So it's not flowing much. Ooh, that's sharp. No, we're just not going to break. 3,200 feet per second. We actually dropped velocity with this load. We're down the, we're back around the 3,120s, where the last group was around the 3,170s. Oh, we're sticky. <laughs> and I got 31... I oh, know, that was 31.44. I thought it said 3199. Yeah, that one's smeared. You know what? I'm gonna quit. <laughs> the velocities aren't gonna get where we want anyway, and that one had a uh, really hard extraction. I do have two more rounds here, but uh, I'm gonna quit. I'm not gonna shoot it. Not gonna take the risk. So, all right, let's get back to the bench and we'll uh, wrap this up. All right, folks. Again, I do apologize for that poor audio quality out on the range. I will do my best not to let that happen again. Uh, so we are back down here at the bench taking a look at the target. And as you saw out there, nothing spectacular on group sizes. Uh, we had this first shot up here, and I made an adjustment before shooting the rest of the groups. Uh, so this first group was a four-shot group, and we got an average velocity of 3086 and a group size of 1.09. Uh, 
Uh, interestingly, the next group size was the same. We had three shots right in that little center bit there, but 1.09, and the velocity stayed about the same. So we had 3086 on the first one and 3083 on the second one. This group also had a standard deviation of 11. The next group also had a decent standard deviation, but we kind of opened up to 1.7 inches. Eh, stayed about the same 1.65 inches, then 1.85 inches on that last three shot group. Not great accuracy here, but again, what we're going for is velocity. And we did hit uh, some pretty decent speeds. We were right up around uh, 3,100 feet per second before we started hitting pressure signs. And we did hit pressure signs on this last group. Um, that's why I stopped that uh, bolt did not want to come back and eject that shell. It was stuck in there. And uh, it had that smear on the brass. And in fact, if I had the brass with me right now, which I don't, I'd show you that again. Um, but we had the primers getting just a little more flat as we went along. And uh, this group started smearing brass. And once that one stuck, uh, I wasn't going any farther. So we did stop there at the highest charge of uh, 49 grains. And there's all of that to look at in my uh, crappy handwriting. <clears throat> so yeah, we found our best luck down here around uh, 47 and a half grains, and I'm glad we loaded lower. Otherwise, we would have just had these three groups, which would have been abysmal. But these weren't too bad, and they were kind of more reasonable for pressure anyway. And around an inch, which is not terrible. I think we are having a little bit of accuracy issues with our 308, partially because of the dies. And I talked about that earlier, but the RCBS die set that I have definitely sizes the brass too much and makes the neck smaller than it should be when seating bullets, giving us like a four thousandths of an inch uh, neck tension on that brass. At some point, maybe I'll grab an expander mandrel uh, and open that up or maybe get a new die set altogether. Uh, either way, like I said, the 308 is not really the gun we're concentrating on a lot of accuracy with. Maybe someday, um, and I'm, I'm hoping to do this, but I just haven't been able to justify it yet. I'll switch out the stock, switch out the scope, and maybe have the barrel threaded. Anyway, m make it a kind of a custom deal out of that uh, Savage VT. Now we would have to replace bottom metal and all that, so it, it may not be worth it. It may just end up being cheaper in the end going with a uh, completely different gun in 308. Um, but anyway, this has been fun. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. We did hit some pretty screaming velocities in 308 today, which is kind of fun. If you guys enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check us out on Instagram, over on Patreon, and y'all have a good one.